Jackie Einhorn Books published by G. P. Putnam's Sons Publishers since 1838 published by the Penguin Group Penguin Group, USA, Inc. 375 Hudson Street, New York, New York 10014, USA Penguin Group, Canada, 90 Eglinton Avenue East, Suite 700, Toronto, Ontario M4P2Y3, Canada, a division of Pearson Canada Inc. Penguin Books Limited, 80 Strand, London WC2RORL, England Penguin Ireland, 25 St. Stephen's Green, Dublin 2, Ireland, a division of Penguin Books Limited, Penguin Group, Australia, 250 Camberwell Road, Camberwell, Victoria 3124, Australia, a division of Pearson Australia Group Thai Limited, Penguin Books India Private Limited, 11 Community Centre, Hanshield Park, New Delhi 110017, India Penguin Group, NZ, 67 Apollo Drive, Rosedale, North Shore 0632, New Zealand, a division of Pearson New Zealand Limited, Penguin Books, South Africa, Thai, Limited, 24 Sturdy Avenue, Rosebank, Johannesburg 2196, South Africa Penguin Books Limited, Registered Offices, 80 Strand, London WC2ROORL, England first published in the United States by Amy Einhorn Books, published by G. P. Putnam's Sons Copyright, Copyright 2009 by Catherine Stockett All Rights Reserved. No part of this book may be reproduced, scanned, or distributed in any printed or electronic form without permission. Please do not participate in or encourage piracy of copyrighted materials in violation of the author's rights. Purchase only authorized editions. Published simultaneously in Canada CIP catalog record of this book is available from the U.S. Library of Congress. This is a work of fiction. Names, characters, places, and incidents either are the product of the author's imagination or used fictitiously, and any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, businesses, companies, events, or locales is entirely coincidental. While the author has made every effort to provide accurate telephone numbers and internet addresses at the time of publication, neither the publisher nor the author assumes any responsibility for errors or for changes that occur after publication. Further, the publisher does not have any control over and does not assume any responsibility for author or third-party websites or their content, ISBN, 978-1-440-69763, OHTTP colon slash slash us.penguingroup.com to Granddaddy Stockett, the best storyteller of all Abilene. Chapter 1 of August 1962 May Mobley was born on a early Sunday morning in August, 1960. A church baby we like to call it. Taking care of white babies, that's what I do, along with all the cooking and the cleaning. I done raised 17 kids in my lifetime. I know how to get them babies to sleep, stop crying, and go in the toilet bowl before they mamas even get out of bed in the morning. But I ain't never seen a baby yell like May Mobley Leopold. First day I walk in the door, there she be, red hot and hollering with the colic fighting that bottle like it's a rotten turnip. Miss Leopold, she looked terrified of her own child. What am I doing wrong? Why can't I stop it? It. That was my first hint, something is wrong with this situation. So I took that pink, screaming baby in my arms. Bounced her on my hip to get the gas moving and it didn't take two minutes for baby girl stopped her crying, got to smiling up at me like she do. But Miss Lethal, she don't pick up her own baby for the rest of the day. I seen plenty of women's get the baby blues after they done birthing. I reckon I thought that's what it was. Here's something about Miss Leopold, she not just frowning all the time, she skinny. Her legs is so spindly, she look like she done growed M last week. 23 years old and she lanky as a 14 year old boy. Even her hair is thin, brown, see through. She tried to tease it up, but it only make it look thinner. Her face be the same shape as that red devil on the red hot candy box pointy chin and all. Fact, her whole body be so full of sharp knobs and corners, it's no wonder she can't soothe that baby. Babies like fat, like to bury they face up in you armpit and go to sleep. They like big fat legs too, that I know. By the time she a year old, May Mobley following me around everywhere I go. Five o'clock would come round and she'd be hanging on my doctor. Shawl shoe, dragging over the floor, crying like I weren't never coming back. Miss Lethal, she'd narrow up her eyes at me like I done something wrong, unhitch that crying baby off my foot. I reckon that's the risk you run, letting somebody else raise you chillins. May Mobley two years old now. She got big brown eyes and honey color curls. But the bald spot in the back of her hair kinda throw things off. She get the same wrinkle between her eyebrows when she worried, like her mama. They kinda favor except May Mobley so fat. She ain't gone be no beauty queen. I think it bother Miss Leopold, but May Mobley my special baby. 
I lost my own boy, Trelor, right before I started waiting on Miss Leopold. He was 24 years old. The best part of a person's life. It just wasn't enough time living in this world. He had him a little apartment over on Foley Street. Seeing a real nice girl named Frances and I spec they was gone get married, but he was slow about things like that. Not cause you looking for something better, just cause you the thinking kind. Wore big glasses and reading all the time. He even start writing his own book about being a colored man living and working in Mississippi. Law that made me proud. But one night he working late at the Scanlon Taylor Mill, lugging two by fours to the truck, splinters slicing all the way through the glove. He too small for that kind of work, too skinny, but he needed the job. He was tired. It was raining. He slip off the loading dock, fell down on the drive. Tractor trailer didn't see him and crushed his lungs for he could move. By the time I found out, he was dead. That was the day my whole world went black. Air looked black, sun looked black. I laid up in bed and stared at the black walls of my house. Minnie came every day to make sure I was still breathing, feed me food to keep me living. Took three months before I even look out the window, see if the world's still there. I was surprised to see the world didn't stop just cause my boy did. Five months after the funeral, I lifted myself up out of bed. I put on my white uniform and put my little gold cross back around my neck and I went to wait on Miss Leopold cause she just have her baby girl. But it weren't too long before I seen something in me had changed. A bitter seed was planted inside of me. And I just didn't feel so accepting anymore. Get the house straightened up and then go on and fix some of that chicken salad now, say Miss Leopold. It's Bridge Club Day, every fourth Wednesday of the month. Of course I already got everything ready to go, made the chicken salad this morning, ironed the tablecloths yesterday. Miss Leopold seen me at it too. She ain't but 23 years old and she like hearing herself tell me what to do. She already got the blue dress on I ironed this morning, the one with 65 pleats on the waist, so tiny I got to squint through my glasses to iron. I don't hate much in life but me and that dress is not on good terms. And you make sure May Mobley's not coming in on us now. I tell you, I am so burned up at her, tore up my good stationery into 5,000 pieces and I've got 15 thank you notes for the junior league to do. I arrange the this and the that for her lady friends. Set out the good crystal, put the silver service out. Miss